Welcome to episode 11 of the Unstoppable Podcast featuring seven-figure entrepreneur Alex Morton. My name is Dan J. Gregory and I am committed to hunting down the secrets of business mastery and human performance. My goal for the Unstoppable Podcast is to share insights from some of the most successful entrepreneurs, inspiring thought leaders, world-class athletes and prominent celebrities to help you to become unstoppable in business and life. Each week, I'll be bringing you a new interview with an inspiring person and sharing my own results as I pursue the answer to the question, how can I create the ultimate edge in my business, make a significant impact, and live an extraordinary life? Welcome to episode 11 of the Unstoppable Podcast. It's an honor and a privilege to be hosting a very special guest on today's show, someone who I believe is one of the most inspiring entrepreneurs around. The purpose of all the interviews on the Unstoppable Podcast is to not look up to, but rather to look into those who are blazing a trail and unleashing their greatness upon the world. Let me introduce our guest for tonight. At the age of 24 in 2014, he earned his first $1 million. And by the time he reached his 26th birthday, he had already earned over $2.5 million. But not only has tonight's guest created total financial independence for himself, he has helped develop 21 six-figure income earners during his career. And his work now spans over 30 countries worldwide. He has been featured in the likes of Rolling Stone magazine and Forbes, and now in 2016, our guest is seen as a true millennial thought leader and the voice of a generation. He is focused on giving back and helping as many people as he can around the world through his content, his teachings, and his personal brand. In today's show, we're going to be delving into how to build a bulletproof mindset and develop the seven-figure difference. This is going to be a high-octane episode with no holding back, so buckle up and get ready. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to bring you the one and only Alex Morton. Welcome to the show, Alex. Are you ready to unleash? Yes, sir. Great to be here with you, brother. I am excited to, uh, to bring some value today and get fired up. Awesome. Welcome to the show. Let's jump in. Now, I know you've been creating a wave. I saw that you've had 21 flights since January. But before we get into your background, your story, for those of you who haven't met you on one of those 21 flights, could you give our listeners a bit of a sketch around who you are and what you do and what you're all about right now? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I, I I like to look at myself as a normal normal kid. You know, I grew up in a small town, and you know, right now, I know we're gonna get into the kind of the journey here in a little bit, but you know, right now I'm 26. I'm living in uh, Las Vegas uh, part time. I really travel all over the world, helping as many people as possible. And right now, uh, I would I would like to call myself a, a network marketing professional you know we, we have a team of several thousand all over the world and really I'm going kind of part-time now into really just teaching people what it takes to become successful you know I kind of look at where I'm at and it, I'm really where I'm at today because of all the mentors and the teachings and the principles that I learned from you know blessed individuals throughout my life and now all I want to do is give back and empower people literally as much as I humanly can that's awesome. And I, I know you've got a great story. And for the listeners, it'd be really good to hear kind of how it all started for you. What what got you started in business? What kind of stoked your fire originally? Yeah, well, you know, again, growing up in a small town, uh, I always tell people, you know, I saw, I saw rich people, I saw broke people, and I saw middle class people. You know, my family grew up, we were right, you know, in the uh, the upper middle class. You know, my dad worked his butt off, my mom worked her butt off, and they did very well financially, you know, their story is crazy as well. It, it was like bankrupt to multimillionaires. But for me, you know, at a young age, I knew I wanted to do something big. I knew I wanted to make a lot of money, help a lot of people. So I was in a small town in Ohio. Um, at 18, I left. I didn't like the cold weather. I didn't like the snow. I didn't like the ice. So I went as west as possible uh, to Arizona State University. It was actually the only college that let me in. Uh, my grades were pretty much average. SAT was uh, very rough. The guidance counselor and I had a pretty uh, strong relationship in high school. I was in detention a lot, you know, just daydreaming in class, you know, really didn't didn't know what I wanted to do um, academically, but went to Arizona State, um, really didn't fall in love with academics. My mom uh, had a master's degree from Pepperdine University. My dad was a college dropout, uh, but my mom kind of runs the household. So she told me, go to school, finish school, get it done. Uh, so I, I did the whole school thing. But while I was going to school, I actually saw 
a show on TV one day called Million Dollar Listing. Uh, it's pretty big now. It's a real estate show. I was 18 making no money a month and I saw a TV show where young guys uh, who looked like me, who dressed like me, who talked like me were making millions of dollars. And I, and I immediately said, you know what, if these guys can create financial freedom in real estate, so could I. So I didn't have a car. I actually took a taxi cab to the real estate school, walked in at 18. Um, you know, the front desk lady told me I was too young. I said, well, I'm allowed to be 18, so I want to sign up for classes anyway. I signed up for classes. Uh, I failed the exam about 15 different times. Eventually passed the exam, got involved with residential real estate, you know, made some money with that. Spent it all partying, having fun, but then around at 21 years old, you know, I got invited uh, to a business opportunity meeting, um, and I heard about people, you know, young people and older people making crazy money working with their best friends and family, and I immediately said, you know what, if there's people out there doing something bigger than what I'm doing, I'm going to go take a look. So I went to that meeting. I was skeptical at first, thought it was too good to be true at first, eventually found out it wasn't, got in, and, you know, the rest is really history from there. Awesome. What kind of made you uh, see the bigger picture? What what kind of turned you on to network marketing when you were first exposed to it and overcome that initial skepticism? I mean, my thing is, and it, it was, and it still is, is that I looked at, I just looked at most people around me and, and I looked at their results. You know, I got obsessed at a young age with looking at why this guy was in a big home and a big car and why this guy was in a small home and a small car. And I'm not here to say money is everything because it's not, but when you, when, when you don't have money, it ranks right up there with oxygen. So I made a decision, you know, at a younger age, you know, I, I remember sitting in chemistry class at Bexley High School and I actually got sent in the hall because I had uh, Donald Trump's Think Big and Kick Ass book in my chemistry book. And my, and my teacher, Miss Blanchard, I remember her to this day, told me to go in the hall. And I just wasn't interested in the periodic table of elements, but I, I just, I just wanted to figure out a way to create you know, freedom. So when I saw network marketing, it, it was like, oh my God, blinking lights were going off in my brain saying, here is your vehicle. You know, where can you go at, you know, 18, 25, 35, or 65 for very, very little, little amount of money, get involved with an opportunity and have, and have unlimited earning potential. And when I first saw this industry, I was skeptical. I did think it was too good to be true. You know, I was one of those ignorant, dumb, broke morons. Uh, but then I, you know, you know, put the ego down, you know, did my own research. I found out how big the industry was and I saw normal people with above average dreams and goals, uh, making above average incomes. And I said, you know what, if all these people can do it, so can I. Awesome. So when you jumped in, what was your vision when you first started? Um, my vision when I first started, honestly, was I, I looked around the room and with all due respect, I know there's some people watching this on Facebook Live that are probably a part of my first, uh, you know, company, but it was all older people. It was all older people. There was like three young people. And I said, this makes, to me, it makes more sense for the younger demographic because right now kids are graduating college with student loan debt pouring out of their eyeballs and eardrums, number one. Number two, the, the younger demographic not to be disrespectful, doesn't want to go work a job. Okay. And I'm not down on jobs, but I'm up on opportunity. And I, and I looked around the world and I said, you know what? Everybody who's making it happen, who's, who, who's financially successful, they don't, they don't have a boss. They are the boss. Um, so I saw a vision of there are millions of college kids. There are, there are hundreds of thousands of young people all over the world that want something more, that want to create time and money freedom, that want to make it big, but they don't know what to do because our parents, you know, I'm 26 years old. Our parents kind of screwed up. I mean, if they're still working at 60, 65 years old, I'm sorry. They messed, they, 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 something happened along the course of their life where they screwed up because in 2016, if you can't find a way to make a six figure income a year working for yourself, then so, something's wrong because that smartphone is, is a powerful tool, tool. So to focus on that question, the vision I saw was creating a, a uh, not a big team, not an organization, but a movement and more so a revolution of young people all fighting for the same beliefs and the same goals. And that was to, to retire young and live life till its fullest. Awesome. Awesome. So, you know, you, I, I know that having seen your initial journey, you really blazed the trail with, the, with your first company and really inspired a, a, a generation. What do you think the, 
kind of attributes are of leadership that enables you to create a movement like that? What was most important to you? It was, um, I, I got, I gotta say it was depth of vision. You know, when I first started, you know, in the industry, I was making no money. I didn't understand the product. I didn't understand the comp plan. Really, I, I've never really done much of anything of any serious consequence in my entire life. You know, I played sports growing up. I wasn't a freaking all state, you know, football player. I made the honor roll a couple times. Um, SAT again was, you know, very poor. So I got involved in something and I finally felt inspired. You know, I actually had a purpose. I think the leadership skills, especially in 2016, that's going to separate the winners from the losers is number one, depth of vision. You know, the best leaders I've seen, the best leaders I study, they all are, are phenomenal at painting vision, seeing the future, having faith in something that they can't even see yet. Um, so depth of vision, number one. And number two, it will always and forever be leading by example. Too many leaders in today's marketplace, whether it's insurance, real estate, financial products, network marketing, door to door, I don't care what you do or who you are, there are too many people that are managers. There are too many people that are orchestrators that say, go do this, go do that, go do this, go do that. Instead, what a real leader does, the leadership that I follow, they say, I already did this, now go ahead and do it. Or, hey, let's go do this together. And they're always in the trenches, they're always in phase one, and they're always showing their people what to do, not telling their people what to do. Yeah, the best leader is always out the front, right? Yes, sir. So tell me, you had, you had this huge depth of vision when you first got started and it lit a fire within you. What kind of challenges did you face initially when you first got started? Um, I think, you know, the, the biggest challenge was honestly going against some of these, um, you know, skeptical parents or, uh, you know, authority figures. You know, I don't know why, you know, older people sometimes don't like to listen to younger people. Uh, but what I've, you know, grown to realize through my personal development journey really is that, you know, age really doesn't mean anything. You know, there's smart young people, there's dumb young people, there's smart old people, there's dumb old people. Um, so we were kind of fighting the, the existing reality, you know. It, we, we were fighting this whole idea, this whole old paradigm of go to school to get your grades, go to college to get your grades, make a resume, get an internship, shave your face, go get a job. And then someone's going to tell you what to do, when to do it, when to pee, when to go home, how much money you're allowed to make for the rest of your life. Right, you're gonna you're gonna retire at 68, maybe. I don't know the last retirement party you got invited to. I've never been invited to one. My dad's dad worked till he was in his mid 70s. So, you know, and then you know, then then retire, get a nice gold watch, go to Disneyland once with your wife, go to Europe once with your wife, come back, watch TV, die, and then that's it. So I'm not saying that's bad. If that's what somebody wants to do with their life, that's perfectly fine. I'm not here to judge anybody. Hopefully people aren't here to judge me in my opinions. But at the end of the day, we were creating a new model. And when you create a new model, you must fight the existing model. So we were, we were selling a dream of work your butt off for three to five, six years and then never have to work another day in your life. And live a life of freedom, live a life of abundance, live a life of fulfillment, live a life of growth. And a lot of people, you know, they didn't really, they didn't really like that. Um, but that was fine. We fought through it, and you know, we made history, and we're still making history to this day. So, what in in terms of that journey? Then, what was the kind of tipping point for you? You know, you're kind of going to get into that old guard and different people's opinions and negativity and skepticism. What was the kind of turning point that really, really shifted it for you? Yeah, well, you know, thankfully I grew up in a house where I was taught to dream big. And I remember my mom always saying, you know, as a little kid to my sister and me, you know, if you can dream it, you can believe it, you know, never let somebody take away what you want to go do in life. And it's sad because so many people, so many of my friends grew up in, you know, broken paradigm households. And when I say a paradigm, a paradigm is just a multitude of habits in the subconscious mind that controls your behavior, which controls your results. So when you have a kid growing up in, in a broken home where they're told to be average, be mediocre, don't go for your goals, don't go for your dreams, don't raise your hand in class, you know, be quiet, kiss your boss's butt, blah, 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 blee, blee, blee. It's very, very tough. So for me, you know, the tipping point was finally realizing that I could make it happen. You know, at, uh, at 18 years old in our, in our senior assembly, you know, everybody wrote down, you know, where they're going to college and what their major was. And everyone was writing Ohio State, chemical engineering, Purdue, pre-law, you know, Monmouth, you know, science, whatever it might be. And I wrote Arizona State University major becoming a millionaire by 25. 
And I didn't know how it was going to happen, but I knew deep down in my soul it was going to happen. So for me, the tipping point when I got started as an entrepreneur was finally realizing how big it can get. And that's right around when I hit a point where I was making about a thousand bucks a month. That's all it took for me. At a thousand bucks a month, I said, if I can make a thousand a month, I can make a thousand a day. And if I can make a thousand a day, I can figure out how to make a thousand an hour eventually. And then it was just um, off to the races. People bought into that vision and it, and it, and it went. Awesome. And I guess when you hit that first a thousand, it gives you that belief to then go to the next level. Yep. hundred percent. So I know that you spoke of having uh, you know, a positive upbringing with your family who are kind of mentors to you. And, you know, I've heard you say countless times, you know, we're God's highest form of creation. We're capable of anything. You know, to some people that might seem like a catchphrase, but I know that that's a deep belief that you hold and it, it's something that drives you. Talk to me about what, what, how important belief is in success. I mean, belief is pretty much everything um, in, in creating success in life and creating successful relationships, creating, you know, health, wealth, love, happiness. You know, it all starts with belief because before somebody else believes in your product, in your service, they are buying into you. And if you sit down with somebody and you look them dead in the eye and you don't believe in yourself, that person can feel it. Everything is energy. We're spiritual beings. Okay. We operate on emotional, you know, emotional levels. So belief is everything. I mean, if you don't believe in yourself, how is somebody else going to believe in you? You know, I, I, I look at that and I have some friends that say, I can't get a job in Chicago. I can't get a job in New York. I can't get a job in Florida. And I said, if you walked into any employer's office in the country, I don't care what degree you had and you had absolute unwavering belief in yourself and your abilities to help that job and help that company, and you sold yourself, you're going to get hired on the spot. Because when you believe in yourself, other people will buy into you, and they will believe into you. So belief is 99% of the deal here when it comes to being successful. So, so I guess you were, you were kind of quite fortunate to have those mentors earlier on that helped install some of those beliefs. What would you say to someone who perhaps doesn't have that level of belief and you know, they're struggling to get that initial success and they're looking for the outside results first. How can they, how can they find the inner belief so that they can accelerate their outer results faster? Right. right. And, that, and that's a big issue. A lot of people look at the existing reality, the existing bank account, the existing body, the existing health, the existing job, and, and they look out. But you have to always look in because what, what's, what's going on outside of us, all it is is a reflection of what's going on in the inner game. So I tell people, if your belief level is low, number one, you're not waking up motivated, inspired, and you don't have a purpose. I tell people, if you wake up and you don't like what you're about to go do, stop doing what you're doing. You'll figure it out. Um, and if you don't have that belief, you got to turn to people that can inspire you, that can motivate you, that, that, that can help raise you know, raise your belief lid, I like to call it. And I go to YouTube. I listen to mentors. I listen to speakers. I listen to, you know, trainers, people that make me feel good because everything is about feeling. You know, one of my mentors told me you have to always feel good now because when you feel good now, the universe will conspire to help you get to where you want to go a heck of a lot quicker. So if you don't have belief, get belief in yourself. Understand Limiting beliefs are, are nonsense. Okay. Fear, F E A R is false evidence appearing real. Fear isn't even real, guys. You have to just understand that you have the same, you know, capabilities as Dan. You have the same capabilities of me. You just have to find it within you, pull it out, and then take action and get to work. So talk to me about fear, Alex. I, I, I guess part of my reason behind putting this podcast together is because often it's easy to look, at, look up at successful people. But what I want to do is give people the opportunity to look in. So could you tell us about a time where, you know, you faced your own inner fears and how you've overcome them? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because, you know, a lot of people, you know, always, you know, ask me to help them and, and train them on uh, becoming, you know, a better speaker. You know, I've been I've been blessed and fortunate to be able to speak um, on stages. Uh, we talked about, you know, Eric Roy's GoPro stage in front of 10,000 people a couple times. Um, Mirage Hotel and Casino, 12,000 people. You know, Caesar's Palace. You know, I've, I've been able to speak publicly, you know, several times, and it's one of my passions. But people don't understand. I actually was a bit afraid of public speaking. When I first got started, you know, lo and behold, here's the truth. My first presentation was in front of 10 people at Arizona State University. I chugged two Bud Lights right before I spoke to my 10 best friends because I was so stinking 
nervous and scared. So fear, you know, fear, fear is a funny thing. I was scared to speak, but I broke through that terrier barrier. And I, and I said, you know what, why am I afraid of it? There's no, there's nothing to be afraid about here. Just get over it and go out there and do it. I think the best way to get over fear is just by going and facing your fear. Uh, cause when you face your fears, you'll realize they're really not that scary. They're really not that bad. And you just move on and you move forward. So I was afraid of public speaking. Um, and really, my biggest fear, my deep-rooted fear, I, my deep-rooted fear, I really don't share this with too many people, but my biggest fear was not living up to my parents' expectations. Um, you know, I grew up going to conventions of their insurance company where people w- were praising them and giving them so much love and saying appreciation, saying thank you for helping me. Thank you for, you know, changing my life. Thank you for helping my family. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I said, damn. If I don't live up to what they did, you know, I'm not going to feel good inside. So one of my biggest driving factors has always been not really even not really the money, just just to make, you know, you know, people around me proud and really make myself proud and, you know, feel worthy. That's amazing. I mean, it's really interesting. I've met people who have had the same experience, but they've allowed it to limit them as opposed to drive them. And it's amazing how you've created that force. One of the things I'd like to explore is your kind of inner driving force. You've t- talked about kind of making your folks proud. That's maybe something that lit the fire for you early on. But, you know, now as this powerful speaker traveling the world and creating the impact that you're doing, what, what's it, what is it driving you now? Now it's really chasing my potential. Um, you know, I, I've made, you know, a decent amount of money. Is it, you know, insane wealth? No. Uh, but I realized that money money's not going to be the end game to happiness. You know, it's really about fulfillment and it's about giving. Uh, so my drive is, it's like, how hard can I go? How much can I push? How much can I give on a daily basis? You know, I pride myself every day with Instagram, you know, with Facebook, with Facebook Live, with my Alex Moore Mindset YouTube channel. I pride myself every single day to give people something of real value, of real knowledge, of real practicality that they can take and apply in their life. So I'm just chasing my own potential. I want to see how good I can get. I want to see how great I can become. And it has nothing to do with monetary value. I want to see how many people I can help. Um, I think it would be, I, I don't think, I know it will be amazing one day to be able to literally have talked in front of, trained, coached, mentored, and helped millions of individuals because I'm 26 years old. You know, I, I got a long time here. You know, I'm, I'm not 58 years old doing this, you know, out of some condo somewhere. I, I'm 26 and, and I got the whole world in front of me. And my goal is to impact as many people as possible and, and leave, leave a legacy one day. That's awesome. And work ethic is such an important thing. And in fact, you know, whenever I switch on Facebook, there's three people I see. It's Gary Vaynerchuk, um, it's Grant Cardone, and it's uh, Alex Morton. There's, I don't think there's anyone out there more present than uh, you three who's just all over the place working, you know, all the hours under the sun and just delivering massive value. Um, so how important is work ethic, you know, and how, you know, there's people out there trying to look for shortcuts and, you know, trying to work smart, inverted commas. What, what's your view on work ethic? Um, I mean, th- th- I, I lived in, I-, I live by that term. I mean, that, that's literally, I mean, hopefully if you go anywhere in the country and other parts of the world and my name comes up, people will say good things. People will say bad things. I don't really care. Uh, you can't get the whole world to like you. Half the country hates the president and he's the president, right? Um, but at the end of the day, it's work ethic. If you're not known for your work ethic, you're not working hard enough. And there's so many people that they, you know, I want to work smart. I want to work smart. I want to work smart. I, I don't, I don't want to work stupid. I don't want to work dumb. I don't want to work idiotic or moronic, but you can't cheat the grind. You can't cheat the hustle. You know, Eric Thomas, one, one of my, one of my mentors, great speaker, great guy, sweat equity. You cannot cheat the grind and the hustle. And if you try to, people will see you. If you come up with some program for $9.99 and you haven't done jack diddly, you know what, and you're trying to scam people and scheme people and rip people off, I mean, it's an absolute joke and you're not going to last long. You mentioned Gary Vaynerchuk and Grant Cardone. More so, um, Gary, I mean, he's like my guy. He, I, I, I haven't met him. I've actually been on Grant Cardone's show. I actually, I'm in contact with one of his top guys on a pretty regular basis. I respect the heck out of him. But Gary is like on a whole nother freaking, you know, planet right now. And he says the same stuff. He says you have to work hard. There is no get rich quick. And I'm in network marketing. There is no get rich quick, right? 
there, there's get wealthy slow by providing service to as many as possible. And that leads to greatness every single time. So work ethic, you got to work hard. If your name comes up in a Starbucks in Tempe, Arizona, a coffee bean in LA, um, the Mirage Hotel Casino in Las Vegas, or, you know, the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France, and your name comes up and, and somebody doesn't, if somebody doesn't comment on how hard you work, then you're not doing enough. And, and that's what I believe. Awesome. Yeah. Gary V is kind of like the nearest thing to an omnipresent guy. He's, mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's like the holy one. Yeah, um, so talk to me in terms of work ethic then. What, what are your daily rituals like? What are the components of an outstanding day? What are, what are the things you do on a consistent basis to produce the results that you produce? Okay, well, recently, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get really into it, man. You're really getting everything out of me today, which is great. Um, I wake up, and a lot of people, what, what do they do when they first wake up? Grab their cell phone, check Facebook, check Instagram, check, check, check Twitter. A lot of people don't understand the first 20 minutes of, of, of you waking up is when your subconscious mind is the most open to information. And remember, the subconscious doesn't understand the difference between real and fantasy. So when I wake up, instead of grabbing my phone and seeing what's going on in the world, all the media, all the horrors, all the rapes and murders and all the political nonsense crap, you know, CNN, constantly negative news. I don't watch TV unless it's, you know, one of my sports teams. I, I don't have time for that kind of stuff. I sit up. In my room, I close my eyes, and this is what I do. This might sound kind of weird to some of the people out there, but I'm telling you, it's helped me these last 30, 60 days you know, reach a higher level of awareness. I sit there, close my eyes, and I imagine a white light. I put my feet on the bed or my feet on the ground. I imagine a white light coming out of the ground, circling around my feet, my ankles, up to my kneecaps, up to my thighs, up to my stomach, up to my chest into my throat, into my head, my face to my head and goes up. And then I, and then I'm, and then I say 10 things I'm grateful every single day because this is what Tony Robbins and we, everybody knows who he is. Tony Robbins. I went to his seminar. I invest in myself. There's a nugget invest in your own growth. Spent like $4,000 for me, for my sister and I to go to Chicago, Illinois, Tony Robbins for five days, walked across hot burning coals. And he talked about if you're in a state of gratitude, you cannot be angry at the same time. And when you're in a state of gratitude, you allow the universe to bring you even more abundance. So number one, I wake up and, and I do that ritual. I get up, the white light off in my body. Um, I thank God for you know, letting me have another day. And I'm gratitude, grateful. I'm, grat I'm grateful for 10 things every single morning. And that takes all of what? Eight minutes. Eight minutes of your 24 hours. And then I get up. Um, I usually I, I make, I make, a bre I make breakfast. I go to the gym. On the way to the gym, uh, this morning I was listening to um, Tony Robbins, 10 Keys to Great Success. So I turned my car into a mobile classroom. Uh, 90 days ago, I'll be honest with you, 90 days ago I was blaring hip-hop music. I was blaring rap music on the way to the gym. Okay, And I'm just, I, I don't lie, I don't BS, I, I tell you the way it is. But since I've turned my car into a mobile classroom, just in that 20-minute drive, it puts me in such a great energetic state where the rest of my day, I'm just freaking rocking and rolling and kicking ass the entire day. So wake up, be grateful, eat a little bit, um, go to the gym, come back, shower, start my day. You know, I call it daily method of operations. What are you doing every single day? Like I knew I had this podcast scheduled today at 1 p.m. Pacific. I knew I had a call with one of my top leaders in Oregon named Peter Unger, right, at I think it was 11.05 AM. So I, and I know what I'm doing the rest of the day. So I think it's very important that yes, you answer your emails. Yes, you do your calls. Yes, you do your Skypes. You get on your podcast, but you have to take time to connect to the universe. And it sounds kind of crazy. I understand that, but you got to take that time to, to really work on your spirituality be grateful and obviously work ethic, man. I, I work, I work, 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 work. I work till 2 AM. I go to bed. I wake up at nine and I get to work. Um, and that's what I do. You know, I spend time with my family. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I can't go to sleep at night. If I don't give 110% throughout my day, I'm literally pissed off at night. And the last thing I'll say, I know I'm, I'm rambling here. The last thing I'll say, if you're a leader of an organization, if you're a leader of a team every night, you must ask yourself one question. If everybody in my team or organization or company did exactly what I did today, would I be growing or would I be retracting? There's no, there's no stay the same. You're either going up or you're going down. 
Awesome. I mean, for me personally, you know, the morning routine has been such a game changer. You, back in my corporate days, I'd get up as late as possible. And, you know, how it shifts when you're in charge of your own def- destiny. You know, get up, meditate, move your body, fuel your mind. It makes such a difference uh, in terms of your state, your mental awareness, and how much you can get done in a day. Um, I know you've talked about DMO, daily method operation. I know there's going to be a lot of network marketers listening to this call thinking, what does a top leader, what does a top earner like yourself do? Um, what, what are the most important tasks that you must complete every day to be successful in your industry? I would say number one, um, and this is like the biggest one that quote leaders miss is phase one. Uh, when I say phase one, that means actively prospecting, actively recruiting new customers, recruiting new business builders. Cause if you don't do it, no one else is going to do it. You know, we, we've had people in the past get up to 5,000 a month, 10,000 a month, 20,000 a month. And all of a sudden it's time to sit on our butt behind a computer all day and manage other people. So I would say, um, number one, phase one, you leave your house, you go talk to new people. I go to the gym. I get numbers. I go to Starbucks. I get numbers. I go to the grocery store. I'm talking to people. Okay. God gave you a mouth. You need to open up your mouth and you, you need to talk about what you're doing, where you're going, what you're excited about. Okay. Number two, I always connect with the top, uh, top producers, not top money earners, top producers. Who's actively busting their butt day in and day out. I had a 10 minute phone call today with Peter. He's not one of the top money earners. He doesn't have a comma in his check yet, but he's one of the most active people in my organization. So what am I doing? I'm reaching out to him. I'm pouring out to him. I don't care what people did in their past. You're owed nothing. You know, people have this entitlement thing, which is absolute nonsense. I don't care what I did in my last company. I was the youngest and fastest ever to make a million dollars in my first company. I could not care less because one of my mentors told me, he said, Alex, what have you done lately? What have you done lately? My dad says, when I talk to somebody in our organization, never talk about the past, right? How big is your rear view mirror? Very small. How big is your front? Enormous. You got to always be looking forward. So top producers, number one, always be in phase one, actively prospecting, actively recruiting, active, actively enrolling, training, duplicating. Number two, reaching out to your top producers, pouring into them, showing your appreciation, showing love uh, to them. This is a people business. And number three, when you have downtime, you have to invest in yourself. Um, currently right now, I'm doing Bob Proctor, his, uh, his, his program, Thinking Into Results. Um, going through the whole deal. I did, I did three videos three days ago. I did three videos yesterday. I got to do three videos today. I'm taking notes. I'm studying the notes. I'm getting into it. I, we have books all over this house um, from Gary Vaynerchuk's The Grant Cardone's to Tony Robbins' Awakening the Giant Within, Think and Grow Rich, Law of Success. You name it. You name it. It's here. Um, it's here. So that's the deal. You got to be always willing um, to, to grow yourself because that is such an enormous, it's, it's, it's an enormous thing. Absolutely. I think your, your environment as well, in terms of the people you surround yourself with, whether it's your peer group and your mentors, what kind of advice would you give someone who perhaps isn't in the most supportive of peer groups? How can they raise their game and level up and start surrounding themselves with, with winners and more successful people and, and finding new mentors? Yeah, I mean, it uh, it can be tough sometimes. You know, some people don't want to hear this, but, you know, you're the sum of your five closest friends. You hang out with five people that drink beer Monday through Friday, you're going to be the sixth one drinking beer Monday through Friday. You hang out with five people who play basketball every Wednesday night, you're playing basketball every Wednesday night. You hang out with five people who know more than you, who are better than you, who are stronger than you, who are producing more results than you, you're going to grow yourself. So, you know, I, I call it the law of 33%. 33% of your time should be spent with people you're coaching, training, and mentoring. 33% of your time should be people um, that are, you know, better and wiser than you. 33% of your time, um, I believe, it should be um, focused on yourself. So you're focusing on yourself, you're focusing on the people you're bringing up, and then you're focusing with your mentors. Um, who are you growing? Who are you helping? And you got to always work on yourself. Um, and you got to find new people, man. You, you know, get on, get on your smartphone, go join a networking group, get on Instagram and search some hashtags, search on young entrepreneur, 
Search millennials. There are, there are other people out there, young, middle-aged, and old. This is not just geared towards young people. There are people out there striving for more. People want more. People want more. So go find some winners. Go bump, go bump elbows, go rub shoulders, and go meet new people that can take you to new heights. I'm to the point right now, and I don't mean this to be offensive, I have a tough time sitting in the same room as people who are content with their current situation. I just can't do it. That's why I always hang out with what our top producers who have dreams to make not a million a year, but a million a month. I hang out with people that want to have enormous brands, enormous corporations, enormous careers. They want to speak in front of 50,000 people. I'm hanging out, you know, on, on the phone with people like, you know, Bob Proctor. I try to bump shoulders with people. You know, I, I, I try to always be around people that want more because the only limitations you have are the limitations you set on yourself. That's it. Whatever you think you can, that's what you're going to go out there and do. Whatever you think you can't, that's what you're not going to be able to do. Yeah, those limitations hold people back. So what would you say is the number one reason people fail in network marketing? You know, it's got, it's got such a perceived high failure rate. What would you say is the number one reason why people do not succeed? Well, for one, the, the perceived high failure rate, I mean, I, 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 when people say that, I literally just start laughing my face off. There's a high failure rate in everything. I know lots of basketball players who aren't in the NBA. I know lots of football players who aren't playing NFL on Sundays. Uh, I got a lot of friends in real estate. Like like forty five friends in Arizona alone have the real estate license. Uh, two are prop. Two of them probably made a six figure income last year. My parents did insurance. Some people say insurance is the, are, are, are the most powerful organizations and companies in the entire world. Their failure rate was the exact same thing. Turnover rate. People people fail in network market. People fail in anything else. They give up. You're, you're always three feet away from gold. People people give up. People get involved in, in my current business for 90 days, and they say, oh, you know, it's not working. You know, And people will always blame the environment, the products, the leadership, the company. You see these MLM junkies out there jumping company to company to company. I'm launching my biggest project ever. I joined the most revolutionary, revolutionary company ever. If you're good, you can go win with makeup, skincare, energy drinks, oil, coffee. I don't care. If you're good, you go in. LeBron James is, guess what? LeBron James on the Heat and on the Cavs. You put Steph Curry on any team in the NBA, his butt's going to drop 40 points a night. If you're good, you're good. If you're good, you can go win anywhere, anywhere. So people fail because it, it's their it's their own inner battle. It's their own inner game. You know, I, I think it's weak. They're weak-minded individuals that just give up and quit. And if you quit one thing, the next thing's going to be even easier to quit. You quit that, the next thing's going to be even easier to quit. You know, I remember second grade, and I'll be done on this on, on this uh, on, on this question. In second grade, uh, in West Virginia, we lived in West Virginia for six months. My mom almost killed my dad uh, because it wasn't a really pleasant place to be at. And I joined a little league baseball team, and I legitimately hated nothing more <laughs> than baseball because it was so slow. I just couldn't stand it, right? In high school, I played. It was football and tennis and a little bit of basketball, okay? But I went home, and I remember vividly. I said, Dad, I want to quit baseball. And he said, you signed up? You signed up for it? You're finishing I said, Dad, I want to quit baseball. He said, you signed up for this. You're finishing this because here's the thing. If you quit now, then quitting will become – Quitting, quitting will become a customary. If you quit this, you'll go quit the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So just don't quit. And in network marketing, dear God, it's like all you have to do is show up, do the work, and never quit. And if it takes you one month, one year, ten years, great. You're still lapping everybody on the couch that you know that's making forty grand a year that hates their life. So don't quit. Awesome. I guess network marketing to me is not, it's not two words, it's three words. You know, you, you network, you work and you market. You got to talk to people. You know, most people miss one of those three things Amen. and, uh, and expect it to work. So, um, you know, you talked about the kind of the mindset of, of successful people and what it takes between a winner and a loser. What's your kind of like mantra for greatness? What's, what are some of the most important principles that you live by? Um, number one, you have to know what you want. Um, you, know, you have to develop a worthy ideal. You, you have to develop a purpose and a vision, and you have to set 
you got to set a goal. And, and most people set goals that number one, you know, they know they can achieve. Number two, they think they can achieve. Um, those are the two. Those are the two ones that people really hover around. They, they think they're setting some big goal out there. You know, somebody made forty grand last year, and their goal this year is I want to make sixty. I think I can make sixty, right? You got to go into, I call it the fantasy land. I call it Dreamville. Call it whatever you want. You have to set a goal that you don't know how you're going to go hit, right? When I set out to, I got challenged to write a book by Bob Proctor, okay? And I, I had no, I never wrote a book in my life. I wasn't even good at school, but I said, you know what? I'm going to write a book and, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, this thing's going to be a bestseller. And, um, you know, the first book came out. You know, I, I had, you know, a couple, I had one chapter in it, but guess what? It hit Amazon bestseller. I wrote the thing, I set it in and people liked it. You know, the book I'm, I'm releasing in the next, you know, three to four months, uh, dorm room to millionaire. I, I sat down and I wrote the book and, and, and it's just going to happen. So you, you have to set goals that you don't know how you're going to achieve at 18. I said, I'm, I'm going to make a million bucks by 25. Everybody laughed at me. I signed up for my first network marketing company. Everybody laughed at me. Every, everybody made fun of me except for a few people who got rich. Um, you know, nobody, nobody, believe, nobody believes until you make it. You know, I saw a meme out there about Kanye West and whether people like him or not. I don't know if I'm a fan or I'm not a fan. I think he's a genius in some aspect. I think he's a butthead and he's a dick in other aspects. But there was something about he said when he was growing up in Chicago, Illinois, he told everybody he was going to become, you know, a mega superstar in music. And he said, nobody believed. And he said that he kept telling himself, well, if nobody believes in me, I got to believe in me. So you got to have, you got to set scary goals. You don't have to know how they're going to happen. You just have to know they're going to happen. Number two, absolute unwavering belief in yourself. That's it. If you have unwavering belief in yourself, you, people will buy in to what it is you're doing. Number three, we talked about it. You have to have massive work ethic. I think, the, I think winners win. I think I think I think if you lined up, you know, a hundred winners in a row and you did this exact same podcast, network marketing or not, it could be completely different. They're gonna say the same things. Every top earner, every top producer, every top leader in any field, I if they, they set goals, they have dreams, and they let nothing and nobody get in their way. You know, on the come up. They were at my own, my own college. You can Google these articles and still find them. We're writing, you know, articles about me, calling me a snake oil salesman, um, death of a salesman, um, hyped up college kids on caffeine, selling dreams. I mean, you name it, all these different things, but it didn't stop me and it didn't stop us. It wasn't me. I was a very small percentage of what caused this whole thing. But at the end of the day, if you're a winner, you're going to figure out a way to win. And if you're not a winner, you're going to make some, you're going to make some excuse up. But in reality, if you fail in life, it is your fault. Your fault. I think the thing you've, you've made clear is, you know, it's, it's keeping it simple. You know, I've, re, I've been rereading Think and Grow Rich. I read it every year. And it's just the simple principles of having a big desire and, you know, focusing upon it and not letting it go and believing fully that you can achieve it. So many people try and make things complicated where in, the simple route is the, the fastest way to the fruit. So what's your view on uh, making things complicated and simplicity? Is that something you see as a, as a major challenge for people? Um, I think you got to keep it uh, kit. We call it kiss. Keep it, keep it simple, stupid. Um, I think, I think a lot of people try to complicate um, success for one. I think we go, <laughs> we go to school K through 12 and not one person talks about goals the most I got out of high school were the conversations with certain professors that had nothing to do with the material they were teaching. I remember one math, two math teachers in particular, Ms. McCrary and Mr. Ryan. My biggest growth moments in those classes and courses came from before school or after school conversations. Um, K through 12, no one talks about setting goals and how to create financial success. You know, you go to college, I, Arizona State, I know it's, it's deemed a party school. They're top 30. They're a top 30 business school. There's not one kid at that university learning how to go out and make money. They learn how to make a resume, go beg someone to hire them, kiss some boss's butt for 40 years, and, and, and that's it. So, you know, you got to keep it simple. I mean, you got to break it down to the simplest form. And, and it's hard right now because when you look at the, the money 
the money scarcity, you know, 3% of America owns 97% of all the money. I just toured six countries in Europe. It's the same thing over there. So you have to just be very careful who you talk to, who you get advice from. Like I would listen to this podcast because you know you're going to get real information and real content on how to be successful. So I would just say be careful who you talk to, be careful who you take advice from, and distinguish the difference between advisors and mentors. Advisors, advisors can be boyfriend, girlfriend, mom, dad, sister, uncle, aunt, coach, professor, teacher. They'll tell you why things will or won't work. Okay, at ASU, there were teachers that I tried to share my company with and they told me straight up it was an illegal business industry, right? Network marketing does more sales every year than the NBA, the NFL, the NHL, the NCAA, and NASCAR, and the music industry, and the movie industry combined, right? So I would just say an advisor, they don't have the results. Mentors have your results. Mentors already have that dream home, the dream car, the dream life, the dream money, and the dream contribution. Right now at 26 years old, I can confidently tell you and everybody else watching this, I literally refuse to listen to anybody unless they, they, they have the results I want. Mom can teach you how to make phenomenal homemade meals, right? Dad can teach you you know, how to, you know, throw a football, but you have to listen to people on financial success who actually have financial success. And to me, that makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're coming up to the final round. What I'm keen to know, I think you know, what I see in the marketplace is this entrepreneurial revolution, particularly amongst young people. That's something you spoke about, how you sparked that desire inside of yourself and then shared that through, through your uh, own message. What does the f- future look like for you? What are you working on right now? What, what are you most excited about going forward? Um, you know, right now, I'm, I'm extremely fired up about, you know, the company I'm with right now, Network Marketing. You know, I, I made a switch about seven months ago. Um, you know, my first company was unbelievable, awesome, incredible, phenomenal. I was literally raised in that company. Uh, but, you know, I made a decision to go somewhere else. And the place I'm at right now, it, it is just absolutely incredible, phenomenal. We're working with incredible people. We have incredible people. We're attracting incredible people, unbelievable products. So right now my main focus is helping every single person in my organization win and win big. And then about 45 minutes a day. I mean, this is all I'm doing today for this 45 minutes a day. You know, I'm either cutting a video, I'm writing up a post or I'm posting something on YouTube to provide value and to provide you know, content. And, you know, later on down, down the year, you know, as the year goes on, there's going to be a lot, a lot other things to, uh, to get excited about. But for right now, you know, it's really, you know, youtube.com slash Alex Morton mindset, um, Alex Morton mindset.com to, to, to subscribe, uh, to my email list. I send, um, stuff that nobody else sees to my, to my, I call it inner circle. And then, you know, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, you know, Alex Morton, YP, Alex Morton mindset. Um, so my vision right now is to build, this current company as big and as strong as possible. Um, it's not. For, I'm not doing it this time for me whatsoever. It's all for the people that have put faith and trust in me. And then you know, part time, you know, helping as many young entrepreneurs as possible. You know, get from where they are to where they want to go. And um, I'm speaking from truth. You know, when you tune into any Alex Morton information, you're not tuning into some kid who read a book that you know just just regurgitated information and, and selling it to you for ten bucks. You know, you're not tuning into some random guy who's, you know, in some random condo who's never made any money before uh, teaching you how to make money. You're listening to somebody, you know, that, that that's made that that's earned the incomes, that's traveled the world, that's built organizations. And now all I want to do is help more people do the same and live a life of health, wealth, love and happiness, man, because life's short and we got to make the most of it. Awesome. Yeah, you've been listening to someone who's really uh earned his rights through the grind of his uh, career and everything he's achieved so far. So my final qu- uh, question for you, Alex, is if you had to start from scratch knowing everything that you know right now and you had to go right back to the beginning, where would you start and what would you do? Wow. Um, I would learn as much as I could. Um, if I needed money for you know food or rent, I would, I would get a part-time job. Again, I'm not down on jobs. I'm up on opportunity. I've had jobs before, um, plenty of them. You know, I, I would I would create some type of money that you can live on, and then I would educate myself as much as humanly possible. And here's some names for you guys: Jim Rohn, Les Brown, Tony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk. Okay, people that have what most of us want: Bob Proctor, 
right? And then I would find somebody in my local community who has what I want. To be honest, if it was honestly me, I would go find the richest neighborhood near me and I would go knock on a door until somebody would talk to me. And I would make friends with somebody who was wealthy and I would, I would, I would literally cause them to help me get going in business. That's, that's honestly what I would do. I would go find somebody and that's just grit, G-R-I-T. That is you saying, if there's not an opportunity, you have to create an opportunity. You know, most people fail in everything because they do not push the limits. They do not push themselves. I would go knock on every wealthy person's door I could, ask them questions, interview them, gather that information, go to my public library, read books, watch videos, learn, 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 and eventually the universe is going to pay you back, you know, for you putting in the grind and putting the sweat equity and you working your butt off. Awesome. Alex, you've shared so many uh, nuggets and wisdom today, not only in terms of mindset and what it takes to be great and unstoppable with, from a mindset point of view, but also, you know, the routines that you go through, your daily rituals, your morning routines, your DMO, that's really going to help the listeners of this podcast and, and your, your followers too. So thank you so much for sharing everything you shared with us today. Really excited to see uh, what you create going forward. And um, final piece is how can people get in touch with you if they want to reach you? I would say, uh, well, number one, thank you for having me on this. You know, I know we talked earlier and you just started this thing in 2016. So I feel blessed to be one of the first and hopefully, you know, get, get this thing rocking and rolling uh, for, for, for the years to come. But to connect with me, um, again, alexmortonmindset.com, uh, youtube.com, Alex Morton Mindset is the channel. Um, Instagram, Alex Morton Mindset. Facebook, Alex Morton. Um, Twitter is Alex Morton YPR. And then Snapchat, I think, is Alex Morton YPR as well. And soon I'm going to have them all on one page. We can just go connect with me. But for right now, um, that's where you can find me. And, you know, if, if you give me your attention, I'll give you value to take your life to the next level, 100%. Awesome, brother. It's been a real pleasure. I really enjoyed the show. Thanks very much for sharing your time and the value today. Stay unstoppable. Keep rocking. Thank you. Appreciate the time, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Alex Morton. What an incredible episode. He had so many golden nuggets to share. Remember to go over to the podcast show notes over at www.unstoppablepodcast.com forward slash Alex Morton to get hold of all of the notes from tonight's show. Next week on Monday, I'll be debriefing this episode and sharing specifically how you and I can put these actions into play. Until next time, please remember to subscribe to the show, share this episode, be unstoppable, go out there and make it happen. Yeah.